Hey friends, it's Holly from Chic Antique and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be fixing up this Jacobean buffet. I found this at a thrift store. I saw it was damaged and no one else around me seemed interested, so I knew I had to have it. As you can see, the top is extremely damaged. You can see they did not use any pot holders or anything like that to protect the wood. So this veneer top has bubbled and cracked and we're going to have to repair it. This is why you need to protect your pieces, whether they've been painted or not. When you're putting something hot or wet on the surface, this is what can happen to the wood, especially if it's veneer. It's gonna bubble, it's gonna crack over the years, and it's going to leave these dark rings behind. This piece was actually made in Los Angeles, California, which is really cool. I love seeing stamps and marks on the back of pieces like this. We're gonna start this makeover like we always do by first removing the hardware. Now that the hardware is removed, I can go ahead and start cleaning. I'm going to be wearing gloves to protect my skin because I'll be using a TSP cleaner today. When you take off a sticker like this and the finish comes along with it, you know that the factory finish has started to fail. This piece was extremely dirty. I'm assuming it's close to 100 years old. I wouldn't say it's antique because I'm not sure, but it's definitely close. It's very old. I'm guessing it was either in storage or in a garage for a while because it was very dirty and extremely dusty. It was so dirty, in fact, I had to change out my bucket of water five times. After using any type of cleaner or TSP, you always want to rinse it down with clean clear water afterwards so there's no residue. This is what my first bucket of water looked like. It was extremely dirty. Now we're going to go ahead and repair this veneer. I'm going to be using tight bond wood glue and some syringes to get underneath this veneer. This was kind of hard to film, but what I'm doing is gently lifting up this veneer and inserting the syringe inside and coating the area with glue. After wiping off the excess glue, I'm going to be using parchment paper. This is going to ensure that the books and weights I put on top of this do not stick to the glue. So I'm going to cut a couple pieces to size then place a book on top and then I'm going to use two 10 pound weights on top 
to press it down as firm as possible. And then I'm just going to show you another area that I repaired. This one was a little bit easier to film, so just showing you what that process looks like. It helps to press down the surface like this to spread out the glue. Then I'm just wiping off any excess glue using a wet rag. And then I'm gonna do that same thing. I'm gonna put down some parchment paper, a book, and some weights. After that's dry, I need to fill in any damage or cracks. So I'm gonna be using DAP plastic wood filler in the color Walnut. Here are all the cracks and damage that I had to fill on the top. You can see it's pretty extensive. Now I'm going to smooth down the top and that wood filler using 120 grit sandpaper. I do need to sand out this wood filler, but I also really want to remove the varnish or shellac that was used to seal this piece because it's failing. You can see on my sandpaper there that it's coming off super easily. So I need to remove that so that my paint can adhere properly. Then I'm just gonna smooth everything out using 220 grit sandpaper. And the rest of the piece, I'm just using 220 grit sandpaper to smooth out any imperfections and allow the paint to adhere properly. And here I'm just smoothing out the rails using 120 grit sandpaper. And then I'll go in with a 220 grit sandpaper. This just allows the drawers to slide a little bit more smooth. Now I need to get rid of the dust, so I'll be using a rag, and then I'll use a tack cloth. And I'll be using Shacto Interiors Milk Paint today, so I'm just doing a little unboxing. I ordered a zebra round brush to get in some of those smaller areas. I got their furniture wax and I'll be painting using their milk paint in the color Black Beach. I am using a quarter cup measuring cup and I'm going to do two scoops of that in this jar. So that is one half cup of powder. And then I'm going to do the same amount of water. So half a cup of water. And then I'm gonna shake that up really well and allow it to sit for 15 minutes, and then I'm gonna come back and stir it up. I just wanna make sure the consistency is how I like. If it's too watery, you can always add more powder, or if it's too thick, you can add extra water.
So I'll be using my zebra round brush as well as my zebra chiseled wedge brush. And then a little bit later, I'm going to actually be using an artist brush to get in some of the smaller areas as well. This paint is a lot more runny than the paints I usually use. I usually use a chalk style or mineral style paint, which are on the thicker side. This paint is extremely watery, so you wanna make sure you're not applying it too thick because it is a much thinner paint. And make sure you don't leave any globs or drips and be careful of your floor as well. It's really easy to drip on the floor. I really like the consistency of this paint. Not only does it go very, very far, but it smooths out really well because it's so thin and watery. It doesn't leave breast strokes. It soaks right into the wood. And this is a very high pigment paint, so the coverage is really excellent as well. This color black beach does go on a little bit dark and then it lightens up just a little bit when it dries and then when you seal it, it does darken up again. I am going for a somewhat chippy look on this piece. So if you don't want a chippy look, you can order their extra bond that can be added into the paint, but I do want this to have a chippy effect to it. So I'm not using extra bond and hopefully this piece will chip when it dries. If there's anything I miss in this video about this paint or you have any questions, make sure to leave me a comment down below. And you can also find frequently asked questions on the Chateau Interiors website as well as their Instagram page. You can see just how smooth this paint is on the top since this shot is pretty close up and this is a flat surface. You can see it's very smooth and there's no breast strokes whatsoever.
just showing you here what that chipping is looking like just after the first coat. I actually let the first coat dry overnight so that it would chip a little bit more. If you start to see chipping after your first coat, you can sand using 220 grit sandpaper or you can just paint right over it, which is what I'm going to do. And here's that second coat going on as smooth as ever. After letting that second coat dry, I'm going to come back with some 220 grit sandpaper, not only to remove those areas that were chipping off, but I also want to add some distressing to these details. If you want to be a little bit more careful and you don't want to remove too much paint, you can use a 320 grit sandpaper, or if you want to remove more and do more distressing, you can use a 180 grit sandpaper too. So it's just about what kind of style you're looking for. If you want more distressing, use a lower grit. If you want less distressing, use a higher grit. So I'm going over the entire piece using the sandpaper and also focusing on the raised edges and details. You can see what some of that chipping looks like. It's very pretty if you ask me. After removing all that dust, I'm going to be sealing this piece using Shacto Interiors Furniture Wax in the orange scent. I like to apply wax with a brush, just personal preference. You can use a rag or a microfiber towel, but I like to use a brush. And when I'm applying it, I like to use circular motions. That way I'm really working it into the paint. This paint is porous. So it really needs to soak up that wax or whatever top coat you're using. So if you're going in circular motions, it's going to really absorb into that paint. Wax really does take a lot of elbow grease. So if you have chronic pain or you don't have time to really buff that wax in and then buff it off, you might like something like hemp oil or a polyurethane. I don't often use wax because it is very time consuming and it does take a lot of work, but when I do, I always am obsessed with the finish. After I do circles, I come back with the brush and go in straight lines just to smooth it out. This just makes it a little bit easier to remove and buffs the wax in even more. Now I'm coming back with a microfiber rag and removing the excess. The more you buff it, the shinier it's going to get, so it just depends what kind of finish you're looking for. 
and the wax will build up pretty quickly on your rag. So make sure you're moving your rag around and using a clean side on each area. The two ways I know that I have removed enough wax is one, the rag will drag a lot more when there's excess wax that needs to be buffed off. So once you've buffed off enough, the rag is a lot more smooth and it doesn't drag along the surface. The other thing is by touch. So you can feel with your fingers as you go along. If it's still tacky, that means you need to buff more. Now I'm just moving on to the drawer, showing you what that looks like, just repeating that same process, buffing it in with a brush, and then I'm gonna come back with a microfiber rag and remove the excess. If you have a hard time with clear coats and polyurethane, you might like trying wax for a change. It doesn't show any brush strokes, you just have to use a little bit more elbow grease. I ended up keeping the original hardware, so after I finished waxing, I went ahead and replaced the original hardware to the piece. And now that it's all complete, I just want to remind you what we started with. And here's how it looks now. Thank you guys so much for joining me on this makeover today. I hope you enjoyed it. I really love how this buffet turned out. I think I'm actually gonna be keeping this for myself. I just am obsessed with it. I've never been able to find a Jacobean buffet like this in my area before, and it's a really special piece. So I'm thinking of keeping it, but I'll definitely keep you guys posted on that. If you like this style of content, make sure to subscribe to my channel before you leave and hit the bell. That way you're notified every time I upload and also check out some of my other videos before you leave as well. I'll have my most recent upload linked here in the eye, as well as down below in the description. Let me know what you guys think of this makeover. I always love hearing from you, and I thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!
looks amazing. Cool.